Do you remember this one? It was pretty bad, but maybe we can do something about this. This episode is brought to you by CDCovers.com. CDCovers offers a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of the usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. As you may have seen, I recently brought my i9 to the studio to have a working PC and now I somehow need to cool it. Right now I'm using the NZXT Kraken N22 to cool the i9 down but I don't want to waste a good looking all-in-one just for me to work on it. Now the best shot I could think of is this ASI H240 because it is pretty bad and I will never use it in any build or anything else. But it is pretty bad. So I cannot use it because it would be too loud and the i9 would just fry. So to solve my issue, I need to figure out if inside of the H240 it's the pump or the water block that is really bad or if it's the fans. And I am pretty confident that the fans are a major issue because if we look at the spec sheet, they are pushing 45.2 CFM with 1.8 millimeter static pressure at 2000 RPM. And to put this into context, the Kuga Aquas are pushing 70.64 CFM at 2.1 millimeters of static pressure with 2000 RPM. So we know that the Kuga Aqua is pretty good. Now I don't have any spare Kuga Vortex whatever fans, but what I do have is a ton of Arctic P12s. And if you look at the spec sheet, the Arctics are pushing 56.3 CFM at 2.2 millimeters of water for static pressure and at 1800 RPM. So they are not very far behind. So they are not only not very far behind the Cougars, but they also outperform the ASI fans in any given category. Now to have a baseline, I've done some testing over here, but I'm not using the i9 because it's already in use, but I've used my Ryzen 3700X and overclocked it to 4.5 GHz, which means it's really freaking toasty in here. And to start with something, I've used the original Cougar Aqua 120 as it is, and it managed to keep the CPU at 78 degrees C. Then I took one of my Arctic P12s, placed it on top, and the temperature went a bit up to 79 degrees C. Then I also tried a push-pull configuration of the Arctics, which lowered the temperature to 78 degrees C. So right now we know that the Kuga Aqua fan is pretty good, and that the Arctic fans are just a tiny bit behind. Now another issue with this is that I cannot use the Arctics inside of my editing rig because they are completely reserved for case testing. But what I can do is use four of the Noctuas that I have lying around. Now the Noctuas are a bit slower, they are pushing at 1500 RPM, but they have a really high static pressure with 2.61 mm and they push around 56 CFM. So to complete the results, I've also tried the Kuga Aqua with one of the Noctuas, which raised the temperature a bit to 83 degrees C, but with two of them, we went down to 79. So we know that the Noctuas are not that good, but they are also not really, really bad if we stack them together. So the plan for now is to take the ADSI, mount it on here, and see if with some fan configuration, we can make this thing work well enough for me to use it to cool my i9. Now I do not believe that I will be able to use the original fans. We will test them again, but I'm pretty confident that they will perform just as bad as they did in my original review. But what we will find out today 
is if the ASI is really that bad or if the water block is bad in the pump or if it's actually the fans. Because as I noted in the review, the fan blades are really, really short compared to any fan that I have. And I think that we can maybe make it a bit better, not perfect. But it's a 240 fan and I would like to see it perform as I expect from a 240 fan. Okay, so I got everything running now and let's see how bad the ASI performs this time. So after a good 10 minutes we got 80 degrees C. So what we've got here is a 240 all-in-one that performs 2 degrees worse than a 120. That's a really, really bad start. So, to take this one further, let's see if Arctic is somehow able to make this alias I cooler perform at least a little bit better. And no, removing fans on a running system, especially CPU fans, is not a very good idea. Okay, again, 10 minutes run and we sit at 76 degrees C. So we just saw a 4 degrees C difference just because I used the Arctic P12. Which definitely means that the fans are garbage, essentially. But it also means that everything else in here is pretty bad. Because we just have a 2 degrees C difference in between using a 120 red and a 240 red with two fans. So it's it's manageable, but we are very far from what I hoped to see. Now, not everything is lost. I still have more of these fans, so let's see what will happen if I will just stack them together. Okay, so after having it run for another 10 minutes, we are now down to 74 degrees C. So we are having here a 6 degrees C difference in between the original alias I cooler and this stacked Arctic P12 sandwich. So no, the alias I cooler is still very very bad, but with a bit of tuning, it's usable. Let's thank Arctic for making such fans. Now I'm not done. Yet, because I will not use the Arctic fans in here, I will be using the Noctuas, because as I said, I cannot use them. And I will immediately go to four fans for testing, because with the Kuga Aqua 120, I have already seen that only one Noctua is definitely not enough. So we will immediately stack four of them and hope that the temperatures will stay in between, I'm, I'm hoping for 75, 76 degrees C. That would be like a nice middle ground in which I would be okay with using it for my i9 because the ASI original is so bad I would never do that or I would have to push the fans to 100% all the time and then I would hear it on the camera and I really don't want to do that. So let's just hope that Noctua is also able to save the day here. Yes. Okay, so after another 10 minutes, we got it to 75 degrees C. A degree more than the Arctic's, but still very, very good results. And honestly, I'm, I'm a bit shocked that the Noctua's cooled this thing so good. But at this point, I'm very confident, even though the ADSI out of the box is complete and utter garbage, Tuning it with a couple of Noctuas is a very bad idea for your budget, but I had them lying around, I had nothing to do with them, so this will be the perfect opportunity to use them at least somewhere. 
So now let me get my i9 and we will just see how it performs. So I've installed everything inside of the X908 Infinity 2 case. Um, you maybe even saw the black and white build, which will basically end up as being my, my editing rig from now on. And I've mounted the whole set. And I've mounted the whole sandwich in the front because obviously on the top there is not enough place. And I removed every other fan, just except the one in the bottom. Because in the beginning I thought I would be able to fit it in the top, but I wasn't. So I got it in the front, everything was running, and it kept the i9 at around 80 to 81 degrees C under full load. So that's not the perfect result, I would have hoped for a bit less. But it's, it's not bad, it's better than the usual air cooler, and it's probably the best I can do for now, so I will leave it like this. So what we did show today is that the ADSI cooler is pretty bad. Original from the box, it's, it's really freaking bad. But if you are able, or if you are willing to combine it with around 100 euro worth of Noctua fans, you can maybe save it. So for me now, the last thing I have to do is install a fresh version of Windows, throw a couple of other fans in here, and I am good to go, and I have a new editing rig here in the studio. But for you, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned that the ASI cooler is really bad, but with an appropriate amount of fans, everything can be good. And I hope you've liked the video, and then hopefully see you in the next one.